Ja, det är bara fullt sysselsatt även med det. Och sysslan kan fortsätta med efter karriären sen. För just en sån där med skottet då returen sätter Lindholm och då är det ledning Storreta 2-1 efter 9 minuter. Hi everyone, back again with another video. In today's video I'd just like to have a look at this clip here. It's a goal scored by Storvreta, the white team, against Kalmar Schund, the blue team, in a recent match in the SSL. Right now, the ball is with this Storvreta player here. I thought this clip was interesting just because of the way that the shooting lanes were opened up. So I'll have a look at that and I'll go through how that could be applied in other circumstances. So to start the analysis, I'll just have a look at the defensive pairings as is fairly standard on most of my videos. Starting at the net, the pairings are quite obvious here. We have the two blue defensemen with the two white attackers that are close to the net. Moving up to the forwards, we would say that this player on the far side is paired with the white player with the ball. This player on the near side is paired with this white number 77 and strictly speaking that means that this blue player in the center is paired up with this white player who is all the way back on the other side of the halfway line. Now as some of you have probably already noticed the blue team is playing what's called a dice 5 defense. So defensive pairings are not the way that a dice five defense operates. It is what's called a zone defense. So each player is essentially responsible for an area on the court. And the main feature of the dice five is that this player here is in the center. And the defensive team does that so that there is always someone in the center to try and stop the attacking team from getting chances in this prime scoring area here. So this blue player in the center is not strictly responsible for this white player all the way back here. But if we're doing an analysis of pairings, then that's the only player that they can be paired up with. I'll just explain a little bit more about the dice five. So by virtue of having this player in the center, it means that if the attacking team has all of their players on the outside, on the perimeter, then the defensive team will be outnumbered on the perimeter. And you can see that here. The blue team is essentially playing four against five around the outside because they have this one player in the middle taking away this central area. And probably the more noticeable outnumbering situation on the screen right now is the three against two, which is present on the left-hand side of this line here. You can see that it's three white players against the two blue forwards. Okay, so I'll just move it forward a little bit so we can have a look at a few other aspects of this clip. Okay, so this is really the crucial moment of the attack here, or the bit that I found the most interesting and the reason why I selected this clip for analysis. So there's a couple of things to note here. The main one is that this player here was really pressuring the ball carrier as he brought it into the middle of the court. But you can see as the white player crosses this middle line of the court here, this blue player starts to allow distance to separate them. So he's no longer pressuring the white player as tightly or as much. And the blue player essentially does not follow the white player onto the other side of the court. What this allows is essentially a two on one against this other blue player here and you can see that that has begun to transpire right now. This white player that dribbled the ball is still in motion into this area whereas this blue player has essentially slowed down or is heading more this way 
So you can see that there's going to be a two on one against the blue Ford on the other side. Now this pass that has just been made to this white player on the far side essentially engages this blue Ford and drags them out towards that player. And if it's a two on one, that means that the other white player in the two on one is now free. So all the player has to do is make the pass back to this player here and this player will have the ball in space and without being contested or pressured. Now the reason that this white player is able to get free is probably because of the way that the zone defense is set up and played in this dice five system. Essentially this blue player here believes that he is a forward and a forward on the left hand side of the court in this system. So he is responsible for anyone in this area. Once this white player crosses this middle line of the court, he is no longer in this blue player's area. And so the blue player is somewhat confused as to whether he should follow that player and leave his zone or stay in his zone in accordance with the way the dice five zonal structure should be played. That basically leads him to not leave his zone and this white player here can get into space because of that. Now I'll come back to this topic. Okay, so right now you can see that this player here is about to shoot because this blue player has been dragged out towards this other white player and because this blue player here will not go over the middle line of the court, there is essentially a shooting lane in here for the white player to have a shot at. Yes, we can see that the blue center is in that shooting lane, but his chances of actually blocking the shot are probably minimal from there, given that he is so far away from where the shot is being taken. Likewise, you can see that this blue defenseman here is about to go down into a block. So you can see this blue defenseman is still getting up out of his block. The ball is just here. It's just been saved by the keeper. And now essentially there are two white players at the net on their feet that are able to attempt to get access to that rebound. And there's only one blue player in there. And the white player basically gets access to that rebound and just touches it in. It's probably better if both of these blue players here just stay very tight to the players that they are marking and keep them out of the middle, keep their sticks tied up so that they cannot get access to the rebound rather than trying to block the shot and allowing their players to get free in front. So just to come back to that concept of this forward here, not following the white player across the middle of the court. I'm not saying that it's necessarily this blue player's fault, but it is a weakness of playing a zonal defensive system. And most of the defensive setups in floorball are zonal in nature. There are very few that play man on man, but by having a zonal system, if this Ford thinks that he is only responsible for this area of the defensive zone, then it's ripe to be exploited if the attacking team basically places two players into some other area of the zone because there's going to be a two on one there. And the way that this concept can be applied by attacking teams is they can just test where the various defensive players are willing to move and do they have any hard lines like there are in this clip and generally this is tested by dribbling the ball because it sucks in or attracts the defender to the ball carrier and the ball carrier can then basically dribble across the line and see what happens to the defender that has been attracted to them 
So as you saw in this clip, the ball is dribbled this way across this line that runs down the middle of the court. And the defender just basically stops at that line, which allows a two on one on the other side. Likewise, there's another imaginary line which goes this way across the width of the attacking zone. And the way that you could test the defensive team using that line is if, for example, this white forward here had the ball where he is now or somewhere down in the corner, this forward just dribbles it up the boards. And they test if this defenseman is going to follow all the way with them or if they're going to just come to the line and then stop. If the defenseman follows all the way up, then it means there will be space in the corner to play with. So a pass can be made back down the boards to another player who's moving into the corner. Conversely, if the defenseman stops at this line, then it means that a two on one can be created in this quadrant of the court here, or there could potentially be a lane into the middle just above that line for this player to dribble into. It will depend on where the defending player in that area of the court is positioned. So that's all I have to say about this clip. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. Please let me know what you think about it. If you like the video, have you come across any concepts like this before? Um, I will leave you with one question. I'd like to know who do you think should be defensively responsible for this shooter in this position. So leave a comment with your answer. I'm interested to hear what you think, but thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ja, det är bara fullt sysselsatt även med det. Eh, sysslan kan fortsätta med efter karriären sen. För just av sån där med skottet då returen sätter Lindholm och då är det ledning Storreta 2-1 efter 9 minuter.